good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is absolutely incredible. And you know I'm not just saying it, I truly do mean it. With that said, we have a pretty hectic day here today. We actually have construction starting downstairs. I'm excited to finally get stage two of downstairs going. Also, tomorrow is heading to meet our sloth Drogo, so stay tuned for that tomorrow. And uh, today I wanted to talk a little bit about something that fascinates me, guys, and that is how reptiles have defense mechanisms, right? So I mean, it's cool, all animals have defenses, right? But there's something special about reptiles in particular, the wide variety of different types of defense mechanisms that they have. So why don't you just push your problems aside, put your thinking hat on, and let's learn some things together. Certainly probably the most recognizable thing with reptiles defenses are camouflage. This is a lychee gecko, actually a Bosi Island named Reptar. Absolutely amazing animal, he's about two years old. And you think about the camouflage of that animal. I mean, if you were walking through a forest, this mossy trees, and this was there, there's no way in the world that you would see that animal. And I find that's really incredible, right? It's like, again, it's invisible to the world, and that's kind of its defense mechanism, so that any predators that are out there just literally can't find it. And that's absolutely incredible. And we see that, again, with lychee geckos, Europlades, chameleons, so many reptiles, even vipers, like gaboon vipers, will blend into leaf litter. So camouflage is definitely probably the most known Known of the defenses of reptiles. And the next one would be mimicry, just like this Pueblin milk snake that is red, black, and yellow. Well, a little bit white on this one, but you get it, red, black, and yellow. Of course, they're mimicking a venomous coral snake, right? And we all have all heard that saying, right? Red next to black is a friend of Jack's, red next to yellow is a deadly fellow. Well, the truth is that's not always the case, but it is a good saying, especially for North and Central America, potentially. But regardless, there's a lot of mimicry that goes on, whether it's a king snake that rattles its tail, or even a hognose snake that looks a little bit like a rattlesnake when you're going through the woods. There's a lot of mimicry. And again, that's just saying like, hey, wait a second, there's something out there that is venomous or deadly, and this looks a lot like it, we better stay away. And that's how reptiles use mimicry as a way to survive. Then of course, there's caution colors. Take for instance, these blue tongue skinks right here. They're actually using that blue tongue to kind of caution their predators, right? Because oftentimes in the wild, things would bright colors like blues, yellows, reds, stuff like that are poisonous or venomous, right? So this guy is gonna open his mouth, stick that big blue tongue out when a predator comes, and that predator's gonna say, wait a second, that blue color looks like something that I shouldn't eat. It's probably venomous, and it'll stay away from it. The same thing happens with so many other reptiles, like even dart frogs that do have poison, but the truth is, is that color is keeping predators away. Like, hey, listen, I'm poisonous. You better not mess with me. And a lot of reptiles and amphibians use caution colors to ward off predators. An exciting day here because of course we are starting the build of the basement like I mentioned yesterday. So the guys are here to start putting walls up. You get an idea to feel the flow of the basement by the time the day is done just with the walls and stuff like that. It's gonna be really, really cool. So a lot of work for these guys to do. I'll be helping out as much as I can. So uh, construction on the basement is start new Calibra room, new Caledonia gecko room, the uh, kind of VIP sitting area, green room for the podcast. I mean, this place is gonna look so amazing when it's done. So today, Day one of construction. Forget guys, we have the new merch, salt and pepper. We have Diddy and Dixie, different colors. Of course, we have mugs now, we have stickers. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a link in the description. This is gonna be available for a short time. So definitely go get yourself some merch if you don't mind. Your support always means the world to me. Thank you so much. We all know that a lot of reptiles have armor, right? 
nothing better than the turtles and tortoises that have this hard shell made of keratin, right? They're gonna protect themselves from predators that could potentially come up and they're gonna try to eat them, right? They're gonna stick their heads and their legs inside and they're pretty much impenetrable, right? Even a lion in Africa is gonna have a hard time getting through this little monkey's shell, that's no doubt about it. But you also have things like alligators with osteoderms and even snakes with scales and lizards with scales. Those scales are basically their armor, right? And it's protecting themselves from injury and also protecting itself from predators. So certainly turtles and turtles have the hardest shell, but again, a lot of other reptiles have a lot of body armor. Of course, there is threat displays. We know that a lot of reptiles will do threat displays. I mean, look at cobras. That is the quintessential threat display, right? Oh, this gonna hood say, don't mess with me. I'm gonna strike at you. And certainly we have Nova here, the Philip Krill Dragon, that is also a threat display animal. But the truth is he's so docile, he never really throws up. But I will do one thing for you guys. I don't do this often. He hates Night Fury. And guess what? I have Night Fury right here. Watch what happens as I get Night Fury close to him. He'll immediately frill up like that. He does not like Night Fury. And it's interesting because he's the only reptile that he doesn't like. I can bring any other snake close to him and he's fine. So again, I don't want to stress him out anymore, but that threat display is amazing. You saw him go back, he frilled his frills up. He opens his mouth a little bit saying, hey, listen, Night Fury, stay away from me. If you get any closer, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to mess you up. The truth is he's probably not going to be able to do anything to Night Fury, but it looks intimidating. And a lot of reptiles have that threat display to keep predators at bay. One of the more stinky defense mechanisms that reptiles have and this is an absolutely gorgeous snake it's a sunbeam snake but they love to musk and these guys are notorious for musking and let me tell you about woo if you had smell vision right now it smells almost like a rotten garlicky smell really bad now all snakes have different types of smells of musk but the one thing about it is that once they musk you it's like a skunk I don't know how to get it off. Sometimes for two or three days, you'll still be smelling that little bit of musk on me. I'm sure when I'm out and about every now and then after getting a good musk, people are like, God, that guy smells pretty weird, you know what I mean? But the truth is, is musk is a really good way to detour predators and uh, reptiles do a good job of doing that. If I was a predator, I wouldn't want to eat this guy. Certainly one of the more interesting defense mechanisms are things that hog nose and a couple other snakes do it, but mainly hog nose are notorious for it, and that is playing dead. And just last year we had a little one that we were able to film that was pretty cool. And as soon as they hatch out, oftentimes when you touch them, they'll just roll over, they stick their tongue out like they're dying, and they'll actually musk a little bit too, so it kind of smells like a dead snake. And again, it's just not very appealing for a predator, right? A predator is gonna go up and say, oh, there's a dead snake there. I don't wanna eat that. It smells like it's rotting it's not gonna be good for me to eat. And that's an interesting defense mechanism. If it doesn't work, then you're in trouble because you're on your back laying down playing dead, like a possum, right? But it's interesting that hog knows do it, and it's really cool that we got an opportunity to see that last year. Typically, it only lasts a week or two, and then they don't ever do it again because my adults never play dead because they're not really afraid of anything, right? They know life is pretty secure here. But nonetheless, pretty cool defense mechanism. Certainly one of the most notorious things that snakes have when it comes to defense is venom and of course poison when it comes to some amphibia drug. Whoa! And that's the thing. They're going to go ahead. They're going to strike out. This is a rear fang venomous mangrove snake. A mildly venomous snake. So it's not super dangerous. But you guys know that we certainly deal with cobras, rattlesnakes and stuff like that. That venom is certainly going to detour predators. And if that predator doesn't back off, whoo, they're going to come and they're going to get a good strike. Ooh, this guy's coming back at me right now. And I've been envenomated a couple times. Whoa! by these guys and I don't want to get envenomated again because it gives me kind of a headache it makes me feel kind of yucky and it's something I really don't want to have happen again 
And again, I've never been bitten by anything other than a mangrove snake and a false water cobra when it comes to venom. All the other venomous snakes I have, I am very cautious because I don't want to take any bites from them. But what a great adaptation where there's saliva and the proteins in those saliva is actually advanced to the point where there's a, a toxicity to it, whether it's hemotoxin or cardiotoxin or neurotoxin. And it's pretty interesting for sure. But these little guys here, they're not too bad. But again, I don't want to get bit because for an hour or so, I feel pretty cruddy. So we'll go ahead and put this little monkey away. One of the more freaky defense mechanisms is things like these leopard geckos. And a bunch of other lizards will do it too, just like iguanas, is that when a predator is coming and chasing them, and maybe it will grab that tail, that tail pops off. That's right, it's freaky as heck. I've seen it happen, unfortunately, a couple times. Not with predators, just with us accidentally having a tail drop, especially things like crested geckos. If you just barely touch their tails, they'll fall off. As a matter of fact, that's why you don't see a lot of adult crested geckos with full tails, because they fall off so easy. But with most lizards, they will will grow back, you know, and that's a good thing. And that's just a way to keep them safe, right? That's that one last ditch effort. Like I'm running away from this predator, it got me, let me get rid of this tail, and then I can scurry away and run to safety and hide and grow that tail back. It may take three, four, or five months to grow back, depending on the animal, but it'll at least grow back and have another day to fight, right? So it's just a really weird defense mechanism that a lot of reptiles have that I think is pretty awesome. But let's face it, I wanna know from you guys down in the comments, which defense mechanism do you think is the most crazy? And did you learn anything about them? Were you surprised about any of them? Let me know in the comments what you guys think. All right, so the kind of construction of the stud walls is done. So you start to get an idea. I know it's a complete mess in here, but this whole area here is gonna be the clipper room. Actually, the clipper room will go all the way through here, all the way over to this side. And then I know I gotta squeeze through here like this, and it goes all the way over here. This is all part of the clipper room. And then we walk into the gecko room over here. I know it's a mess. All these racks will be out of here. And then this is the actual hallway for the podcast room. Obviously we got the podcast room over here and then the hallway comes here, all drywall over here and it'll come out into this room here which obviously will be all cleaned out and this is where all of like the couches and the wood floor and the really nice VIP sitting area slash green room for a guest to come down and hang out. Again, we'll have TVs up on the walls over here so people can watch the podcast live or we can just hang out and watch like whatever on the TVs in this cool little sitting area. So we are on our way guys, a lot of progress today at least we have the kind of bones of it. Maybe now you guys kind of can see what my vision is. We have a long way to go, but we're making great progress. So uh, absolutely excited to finally see this thing kind of coming to fruition. Uh, I'd say maybe three weeks and we're gonna be done. I am so excited that this basement is getting done. It's gonna look so great when it's done. The Kaluber room, the new Caledonia room, kind of sitting area. It's gonna be so awesome. I just get pumped for these types of things. It's really cool. Also, I hope that you guys enjoyed and learned something about defense mechanisms. Every now and then I like to roll out a vlog where I'm just kind of edumatating yourself. If you get my drift, if you enjoy this video, do me a favor, check out this playlist right here. You can run through it. It helps my click through, so I appreciate you guys watching. Up here, you can subscribe to my podcast channel. We have some bangers coming up. You're gonna love this month. It's gonna be really, really good. On this side, you can subscribe to this vlog channel. Turn your post notifications on. Have an absolutely wonderful day. Remember, be kind to someone, and I promise I'll see you tomorrow.